And we can do it in short order. Because... So we, the people, are the sovereigns. We are the sovereign citizens. We are the sovereign people. And the government was set up to serve the sovereign people. So that is the principle that is central to the way our government works and to the way the political, economic, and legal systems work in every country and every power structure around the world today. Central to every war and every conflict that exists in the world today is the issue of sovereignty. Sovereignty is so key and so important that it is blatantly missing from our vocabulary. It is blatantly missing from our education, even our so-called higher education. It is blatantly missing from law school. It is blatantly missing. You don't hear it talked about in the media, except once, only once did I ever hear the word sovereignty, and it was during the GATT debates on the floor of converts for those who were opposed to GATT. And they were saying, but this would compromise the sovereignty of the United States of America, wouldn't it? Yes, it does, indeed. And so do all the other treaties that we have entered into since around 1945, whereby we have transferred the sovereignty of the United States to internationalist organizations. And so, in order to have a sovereign United States of America, there have to be sovereign citizens and sovereign people in sovereign republics in order for that to occur. That's where it begins, with the people. Now, before I get into citizenship and the distinctions thereof, I'm going to illustrate the power structure a little bit because it's a mystery to most people how this seemingly very complex structure of control actually works. But it's actually very simple. All power structures are derived from sovereignty itself. All of them. In fact, the sovereignty, you could describe it as the invisible part of the power structure. It's invisible to us. We really don't know who all the sovereigns are on the planet today. They keep themselves invisible and hidden from us. But they are the puppeteers, and they are pulling the strings of the visible part of the power structure, which is the part that we see. We see the nation states, we see the transnational corporations, we see the international bank bankers, we see the internationalist organizations like the United Nations, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the Trilateral Commission, the Council of Foreign Relations. These are all storefronts for the power structure. They're like Hollywood movie sets that all look like they have the power, but if you actually walk in, you'll see that they're really just kind of leaning up on two-by-fours that the power really isn't there either. Wherever the media directs your attention, that's where it ain't happening. If you wonder... <laughs> if you wonder why our attention is constantly riveted towards Washington, D.C., and what is Bill Clinton having for lunch today, and when is he getting a haircut, it's because power ain't there. It's somewhere else. And so once you understand that that's how the media distracts us and keeps us from seeing what's true, you have to look in the opposite direction, almost, to find what's really going on. So instead of focusing all our attention on the visible part of the power structure where the attention needs to be is on the puppeteers themselves, who are the sovereign powers that are behind the scenes of all the nation states, behind the scenes of all the transnational corporations, behind the scenes of the international bankers, and there is a lineage of sovereign structures that go back thousands of years. There's an excellent scholarly work by Alexander Christopher called Pandora's Box. Some of you may have seen this. It traces the genealogy of the power structure back 3,000 years up to present time to see actually where these sovereign power structures ended up here in 1995. And it's very surprising to find out that most of the people that are truly the sovereigns and the families that are actually behind it, you've never heard them before. You've never even heard their name. They're invisible. So, my estimate is today on the planet there are roughly 40 interlapping power structures in the world today that are the sources of these sovereigns. And they're all fighting with each other and wrestling for larger market share of control over the whole planet and the earth right now and all of the nation states economic systems and legal systems as well 
they're not all one big happy family all getting together, you know, and chumming up. They're fighting with each other for control, too. There's European power structures, American power structures, South American, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, a lot of power structures competing. And so who will prevail? We don't know. The final, the cards aren't all on the table yet and the, uh, the chips aren't all counted yet. But nonetheless, the principle is the important part here. It's behind the scenes is where you have to look to find where power actually exists in the world today. And then, once the people reclaim their sovereignty and their sovereign citizenship, then we know who we're dealing with because we're dealing on an equal par with those same power structures that are out there manipulating, controlling everybody else who has taken on a subject or a slave status. So, that's about all I'm going to say about sovereignty right now. We're going to keep coming back to it because in conclusion, again, sovereignty is the central concept around which all political, economic, and legal systems revolve. That is the issue. Who is going to be the sovereign? Who is going to prevail? Is it going to be the sovereign powers who are the creditors of this government? Or is it going to be we the people, the sovereigns? Which one are going to prevail? That's the question. We are. We shall prevail.